Okay, guys, so we are going to be talking about today's teaching will be very brief, right? We're going to be revisiting the power of risk management, right? So the power of risk management. That was we're going to be visiting today. I know that this topic may sound boring, but I know that these are the things that have made a lot of us to stand the test of time, right? If you don't listen to these things, then the chances of profitability is very low, right? So you need to understand risk management, right? No matter how good your strategy is, if you're not managing your risk, then you cannot be profitable, right? You need to understand the power of risk management. Now, what is risk management? Risk management is simply allocating a certain percentage of your trade, right? It's simply as allocating a certain percentage of your um, capital to a trade, right? Allocating a certain percentage of your capital towards a trade. So when we are talking about risk management, we are referring to how you allocate a percentage of your capital to a trade. For instance, now let's assume that maybe you have a ten thousand dollar funded nest account, right? I have a ten thousand dollar funded nest account, right? Because a lot of you use firms now, so this is the what we mean. So we simply mean that. We are allocating a percentage of your accounts. So now, advisably, I recommend that um, you should not be risking more than one percent. So, and when we say zero point five percent, right, we are referring to what? Zero point five percent simply means zero point five times ten thousand, right? And right, what we mean by that? So zero point zero five times ten thousand, right? Or zero point five over hundred, then times ten thousand. So. If you divide 0 0.5 by 100, you have 0 0.00. Um, so if you multiply this, you should have $50, right? If you multiply this, you're going to likely have what? $50, right? So you're going to have what you call $50, right? So, so to me, by risk management, you're allocating a percent of your account to a three, right? So that, um, when you when you win, the goal of risk management is that when you win, you win more than you lose, right? That's the purpose of risk management. It makes the words win more on winning trades, right? So when you have a winning trade, you're going to win more, and then when you have losing trades, this is the purpose of risk management, right? So it helps to lose win more when you have a winning trade and then lose less on a losing trade. All right. So let's assume that you employ a risk management system of let's say one is to three at R, right? This is usually the most popular one. Otherwise, the two is nice too, but I'll talk more about that. So let's assume that you use one is to three. This simply means that each time you, you take a, a let's assume that you use one is to three. This simply means that each time you win a trade, you are winning what 150 because you win more on your losing trade. That means each for each risk you take, you're targeting times three of your prof of your of your capital right? or times three of your risk. So if you win, you're winning what 150, all right? And then if you lose, you're losing what? You're losing what? Fifty dollars. So this is the power of risk management now, right? If you win, you're winning 150. If you lose, you're losing 50. This is where this thing comes. So it makes you to be more relaxed because let's assume that maybe you took five trades now. Maybe let's assume that maybe you took five trades, right? And then you lose four, right? You lose four is what? A total of what? 200, right? That is 50 times four, right? You must put it there, 50 times four. And now you now win one, right? Imagine that you, after these four losses, you now eventually win one. Right? After the follow is you basically win one of the trades, right? So now you now win one. So remember that your win is what times three. So only that your win has given was 150. Right? So you can see that despite losing 200, you see that your your total um loss, your, your total PNL, right? Your total PNL is what? Is what minus 50, right? 
Can you see how risk management is beautiful? Can you see the beauty of risk management? Can you see the beauty of risk management? Despite losing four days and winning one, your total loss is what? Minus one hour, which is 50. Minus one hour means minus one risk. Right? So you're down only minus one hour, which is what? Minus 50. Despite losing four and winning one. That is the power of risk management. It helps you to win more when you're winning and lose less when you're losing. So you can take one, two, three, three in, losses in a row and it doesn't matter. Right? Just one or two wins can cover up. Now let's assume that maybe after let's assume that now you took um, ten trips. Now let's just turn the tides. You took ten trips, right? Out of the ten trips, you lose what seven, right? Two seven. That means you lost what three fifty, all right? Which is what three what it is three fifty, and then you win just three. Remember, it's ten trips. So if you win three, that means you won what. 450. That's 150 times 3. Right? Each, each win is what? 150. So your, your win is what? 450. Can you start? Your net PNL is what? Plus. Your net profit is what? Plus $100. Can you see that? This is the power of risk management. All right? This is the power of risk management. Can you see that? Despite taking 10 trades, despite losing 7 trades, Despite winning three out of the ten, you're still what in profit. So this is one that keeps me sane. When I take a loss, I am not so worked out because I know that risk management is in my favor. All right? Risk management is in my favor. So it is always good to manage your risk so that whenever you take one loss, right, you won't get upset. You won't, And also, the, well, if you want risk management to work for you, Right, if you want to okay, always have what is is a specific risk, right? Don't be changing your risk, it can work for you. Have a specific risk management system. These are the, these are the things you must put into place. If you want to put if you want to um work for you, have a, a specific risk management percentage, right? A specific risk percentage, right? Have a specific risk percentage, right? It will work for you, right? And then not as not as you you risk 200 and risk trade. There is one on another trip. So you can see that it won't work if you're risking different, different risks. Imagine that maybe you take four trades, you, you risk maybe 5%, sorry, 0.5%, and then you have, you have risk 2% on another one. It doesn't make any sense. So you have to say your risk are what? Are specific. It is particular amount. If you're risking 10, you're risking 10. If you're risking 20, you're risking 20. Make it linear so that these 10 trades look at work for you. All right? Another thing was put into consideration when you do your risk management is that you have to do what? Think in probabilities, right? Don't put so much hope in one trade. No matter how good the trade is, make sure that you're risking the same thing. Not that you think probabilities. There's always a chance of an A plus trade being, being a loss. Any trade can end a loss. And I always tell my students this. I always tell my private students this. Any trade can end a loss. And any trade can also end a win. There are trades which that so don't ever over leverage on any trade. Anyone can be a loss, anyone can be a win. Anyone at all. That tells us that you won't even believe that we we'll play and you just end up playing out. So it's a possibility that any trade can end a loss and any trade can end a win. So you, you have to think in that regard. Always say, okay, any trade can end a loss. That's why be A plus. An A plus trade. Is a trade that has a higher percentage. Maybe let's assume that maybe your normal trades are what? Maybe your normal trades are what? Normal trades are, maybe you have what? Maybe let's say your normal trades have what? Have maybe let's say a forty percent chance of playing out, and A plus has like let's say seventy percent. Your A plus trade has what? Let's say eighty percent. Despite having eighty percent, there is still what a twenty percent chance you can still end the loss. So you can say that no matter how good that A plus trade is, there is still a likelihood that it can end the loss. So it's always best that you don't, you don't over leverage, right? So you can either use a fixed risk management system or maybe you, you risk more A plus, but make sure that you're always thinking of probabilities. Don't over leverage your whole account on one trade because any trade can end with a loss and any trade can end with a win. So this is the giveaway I'll be announcing if you participate in all three. Make sure that you tag me on this statement. Any trick can end the loss, and any trick can end the win. So 
screenshot this and tag it on 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 um, my Twitter. Also comment the comment section. So if you want to win the giveaway now, this will be a cash giveaway. Make sure that it was you comment this, comment this on on here on YouTube, comment this on YouTube. Right, this is the rules to follow. Comment this on YouTube, here on YouTube, comment this on YouTube on the comment section. Right, so let's type this out. Any trick and the loss, any trick and the win. Right, comment here on YouTube, and then make a post. So, tag me on Twitter with this too. This is a cash giveaway now. Comment here on YouTube and then make a post and tag me on Twitter. Any trick and the loss, any trick and the win. That's what you just post, right? So that is by the way. So it's very good. I think a risk percentages, right? So I'll just quickly tell you guys quickly what um, the best risk to use. So if it isn't a one is a two system, if it isn't a one is a two system. Maybe use one is a two hour system, right? One is a two. You have to have what a winning rate of at least forty percent to be profitable, right? If you have been, um, it isn't one is a two. You have to have a winning rate of at least forty percent. Is it one to three? You have to have a win. Uh, you have to have a win of at least at least thirty percent. Be profitable. That means at least you are, you can win three out of ten. All right, you can win thirty out of hundred. Why for one to two? You have to win at least four out of ten. Forty out of hundred. That is how to be profitable with this. So these are these are the least ones. You can always go for one to four, one to five, one of the bigger ones. But for these ones, one to two, you must win. At least thirty percent to be profitable, right? Then if you want to one, right? If you want to one, you have to win at least sixty percent of the trade. So if you want to one, which I don't recommend, you have to win at least sixty percent. So you can see that the lower the the the, uh, the higher the real the unit the win rate you need. If you want to trade. Is one is to one, you need at least 60 out of what out of 100. This one is to three, you need at least 30 out of 100. If you want to need at least 40 out of 100, because that the bigger the risk reward, like what the lower the win rate is required, right? And of course, you can always have a higher win rate. Someone can have, like, let's say one is to three, right? And the person is using, uh, maybe the person is using, uh, maybe. But one is to five, and he has a win rate of what? So this is also very possible too. So I can have a one to five, and that has a win of fifty percent. So now the win rate is determined by your back testing. So go and back test your strategy, right? Understand the win rate of your strategy. So this is why back testing is important. Simply open your 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 um your trading tool. Either trading view or MT5 or MT4 or whatever you use, or maybe match trader, open your charts, right? Use your strategy and understand what is best for you. Does the one is the two hour favor you? Do you have at least 40% win rate? Right? Does your strategy have a 40% win rate? If yes, they can see one to two. If your strategy has up to 30% win rate, you can see one to two. So just do a back test to find out what winning rate. Your strategy has, and I will tell you the best out to be using. For me, I like to use between one to two and one to three, right? I use between two of them. Sometimes I use one to four, one to five, but I usually use one to two, one to three. I usually swap between one to three and one to two, and that's working for me. I don't, I never use one to one, never. I don't one to two or one to three. I don't usually swap between these two, right? You can choose to be swapping between two of them, right? It's still very nice, right? So it's up to you. Can just choose to make your this. So now, another thing you should notice that there are two ways to use risk management. Either you have a fixed IR, or you can do what you can make it flexible. So be flexible. So some people like to use a fixed one to three. Some people use, one, some people use one, a fixed one to two. Why some people prefer to you know depending on the structure, right? If structure permits one to five, they will take it. If permits one to four, they will take it. So anyone works. Make sure you back test and always um, review your performance. If flexible is not working for you, then go for fixed. If it doesn't work for you, then go for flexible. So you can choose anyone you want. You can start with fixed first and then watch if it's going to work for you at the end of the month. If it doesn't work, they can swap to what flexible. You can always swap 
there is no there is no static thing there. You can start with fixed. If it doesn't work for you, they can ask maybe move to what flexible RR, all right? The one where you can be changing from one to two to one to five to one to six, depending on the structure of the market, right? So it's depending on the structure of the market. The market structure is one to five. You can take one to five. It's one to two. You take one to two. It's just up to the structure of the market. Why fix even if the market is one to ten? You take one to ten and you're out. So it depends on you. You can choose fixed one. Even if there's one to hundred, you just take one to ten and you're out. Don't see again. Or flexible, you can take past shout and then hold for the full push out profit. In flexible, you can take past shout. Maybe you take one to three, you can take half and then hold for one to ten, right? When you're being flexible, always take partials. Very important. If it's in flexible at uh, all, uh, always take what partials. Right? So you won't make a winning trade end loss. So always take partials when, when you're using what this. When you're using flexible, always take partials, right? Take partials. Is it a flexible one? Always take partials. But if you fix, you can choose not to take partials. Just say, okay, full ones to three, full ones to two. And that is gone. You can also choose to use uh, a style where you say, maybe ones to three, you take partial ones to three. This is for long term traders. Then you can take, fix, you can take uh, partials here. That's C for fixed. You can take them, maybe at ones to eight. You cannot take full. This is also a fixed one too. This is also a fixed one too. The person is taking one to three partials, they want to ten full. So you see a fixed one too. So it's always good to take partials if you're going to hold for a very long RR. Always take partials if your RR is always like very far, like one to ten, one to eight, one to seven. Always take partials. So it's all the best on you, all right? So if it's fixed and you're going for a long partials, like very long trade. Take partials. But if it's maybe you're not taking one to three, you can just maybe full one to three. Or let's say one to two, you're full. Right? So if it's the less one, you can choose to take everything. But if you're going for a longer arm, always take partials at, at strategic points. One to two, take partials. And then if you're taking flexible one, it's very important to take partials along the way as you're holding, you know. Suppose you who's the swing for one month and it's, there's a market is moving, you're taking partials, the market is moving. I know a mentor that took a trade for three months. So when he moves some distance, he will take partials. He kept holding until he couldn't take partials anymore. Right? So it's always good to do that. If you want like holding this, always take partials. Right? So this is where I'm ending this call. Then remember what I said, back test your strategy to understand what how it works best for you. So back test your strategy to know what is the best RR for you. Right? Back test your strategy to know the best RR for you. Because your win rate will determine your RR. So if you have a win rate of 40%, it's best you maybe go with um, 1 to 2 or 1 to 37. So always do that. And then finally, remember that your RR can also affect your, your win rate. Someone that has a lower RR, remember this, notice this. Someone that has a lower RR will always have a higher win rate, right? Right? Just notice this too. Lower RR. Usually, not the always, usually have a higher win rate. Because why? It's easier for price to go for one to two than to go for one to seven. Price can hit one to two and then reverse on you. All right. But for the market to hit one to ten, it might reverse on you. So the likelihood of having a uh, a lower arrow, we have what a higher win rate. All right. You want to have maybe a, an eighty percent win rate. It's likely you're one to two, one to one. So that is it. So lower arrow usually have a higher win rate. But we just remember what I said. I should back test to know what works for you. Just do this back test, and then I will see you guys in tomorrow. Call. Don't forget to pass it in the giveaway. So you show this, and then say anything can end the loss, anything can end the win. So see you guys in tomorrow's teaching. So have a wonderful day. Cheers and God bless.